Welcome to Switch Up, where we switch the script on history and shine a light on those left in the dark. I've always liked history, but when it comes to the American education system, there's a large chunk of history just kind of missing. Since history is written by people in charge and mostly the winners of wars, uh, a large group of people, such as minorities, races, cultures, they all just tend to get overlooked by history. Um, so I'm here to change that. I will, I'm starting a series about black contributions to American history, but like inventors, pioneers, explorers, uh, people that have just been lost to our educational system. Um, for example, Thomas Edison. We all know him, the brilliant inventor behind the light bulb. But do you know the person that helped him improve it, that helped him make it? His name is Lewis Latimer, and this is his story. Lewis Howard Latimer was born September 4th, 1848, in Chelsea, Massachusetts, to two escaped slaves later to support his mother and his family. Uh, when Lewis was 16, he lied about his age to enlist in the U.S. Navy during the Civil War. After he was honorably discharged, he went back to Boston to work for Crosby and Good Patent Law Office, where he taught himself mechanical drawings and drafting by observing other draftsmen at their firm. On top of assisting others, Lewis designed and patented a number of his own inventions, including some improved railroad car bathrooms, which he co-patented in 1874 with Charles M. Brown, and an early air uh, conditioner unit that he called an apparatus for cooling and disinfecting. A year before that, he would marry his wife, Mary Wilson, Lewis Latimer. He would then go on to also be responsible for a patent of safety elevators that prevented people from falling out of the elevator and into the shaft. Lewis's skills were well suited for post-Civil War era where a lot of scientific and engineering breakthroughs were made. Lewis was a man that cared deeply of those in his life, and a man that wanted to change the world for the better. Um, not only for those that he loved, but for the rest of the world too. Uh, he would actually write poems, and several of which I will read to you a little bit, but they provide a glimpse into who he was as a person. Um, the two most telling, at least to me, are Friends and Ebb and Venus, uh, two beautiful poems about friendship and love, respectively, and I feel, I just feel it appropriate to read them to you before moving on. Uh, partly so you can get a better understanding of who Lewis was as a person, and partly because these poems deeply spoke to me, and I hope you can get something out of them as well. And Friends reads as follows. Friend of my childhood, of life's early days, when together we wandered through bright, sunny ways, each true to the other, till full manhood came, and found the old friendship as ever the same. Came summer and winter, years waxed and waned. Youth it had left us, but friendship remained. And now, as with white locks, I bend o'er life's page. The friend of my childhood is the friend of my age. It's a beautiful poem about true friendship and how <laughs> true friendship that lasts a lifetime and how a good friend will be there for you through thick and thin, through the seasons, through the changing of tides, and I personally just really find it a touching poem. And Ebb and Flow, e <laughs> different thing. Ebb and Venus is arguably even more beautiful poem about his love of his wife and how societal beauty standards did not matter to him because he had found the most gorgeous thing in his eyes and he it definitely reads as such in this poem 
Um, and it reads, Let others boast of maidens fair, Of eyes of blue and golden blonde hair. My heart, like needles, ever true, Turns to the maid of Evan Hugh. I love her form of matchless grace, The dark brown beauty of her face, Her lips that speak of love's delight, Her eyes that gleam as the stars at night. Over marble Venus let them rage, Who sets the fashions of the age, Each to his taste, but as for me, My Venus shall be ebony. From these poems you can glean that Lewis was a very passionate man that believed in what he believed in and fought for those that he loved as well as loved strongly. Uh, he was the kind of person that through everything would value his relationships above, above all. But for right now, back to his inventions. Um, he was directly involved in inventing the telephone working closely with Alexander Graham Bell and helping to draft designs and patents. He also worked closely with Hiram Maxim and Thomas Edison on the incandescent light bulb. Um, with such a deep knowledge of both patents and electrical engineering, uh, he was absolutely integral to the process and even developed the filament for the light bulb. See, Thomas Edison can only really get as far as figuring out that if you jam a bunch of electricity into something, it starts to glow but he couldn't really get it to glow any brighter than the basic candle. So uh, when Lewis, someone that worked for him, came up with the idea that if you carbonize the filament, you can use much less electricity and get a much better result. So that's when Lewis and Thomas Edison started to work together on the incandescent light bulb. And in 1890, uh, Lewis published a book called Incandescent Electric Lighting, a practical description of the Edison system uh, to help promote and defend the design of the light bulb because at the same time, Nikola Tesla was also coming up with his own light bulb design and Thomas Edison was very, very, very greatly scrutinizing what was honestly a better design but we're not gonna get into that right now <laughs> um, lewis was actually the first black man to join the edison pioneers group which only numbers a hundred uh, the edison pioneers group were a group of men that had worked very closely with thomas edison over the years and mostly consisting of people who worked with him before 1885 um their first meeting was actually in 1918 without without Edison present, um, presumably because he was working on a military project because World War I was still going on. Um, their second meeting was with Edison, who at this point was standing with the assistance of a cane. Um, in 1924, the Board of Patent Control that, that Lewis was working for dissolved and he would go on to work for Hammer and Schwartz um, who I can only assume was another patent firm as I can't seem to find any real information on them until he retires. Some other patents and inventions that he had assisted with and worked on are the creation of the electric lamp which he patented with Joseph V. Nicholas um, locking racks for coats, hats, and umbrellas, and book supporters, funny enough. Um, he also wrote a number of books outside of the incandescent electrical lighting book, um, including various pieces of African-American journals, a poetry book called Poems of Love and Life, uh, two of poems you've actually heard of, well, you actually heard when I read them to you, Lewis was also an early advocate for civil rights, um, writing a statement for the National Conference of Colored Men, a convention held to bring together forces to end enslavement and fight for equal rights for African Americans about equality, security, and opportunity. Lewis Latimer passed away in 1928 with a legacy to 
be impressed by. Um, he left behind two children, Leonette Latimer and Louise Latimer. Um, but because of a myriad of inventions and patents he was a part of, Lewis was actually inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. He was a founding member of the, of the Flushing, New York Unitarian Church. Uh, has an invention program named after him at MIT. And in 1968, a school in Brooklyn was rededicated to Lewis H. Latimer's school in his memory. Sixty years after his death, his house was moved from Holly Avenue to 137th Street in Flushing, Queens. Uh, that street was also renamed to Latimer Place, and the house was turned into a museum to honor the inventor. A set of apartments was also constructed in his name because his dedication to bettering the African American community and their standard of living uh, called Latimer Gardens. And in 1988, a committee was formed called Lewis H. Latimer Committee to protect his home in Flushing, New York. When you Google Lewis Latimer, Google says that his name will forever be connected to the light bulb and to the telephone. But I've never heard of him until I started doing research for this and they never talk about him in school outside of college. So, remember by who exactly? College students, sure. Me, definitely. Those of you who watch my video, maybe you'll retain his memory. But African American history is American history. And the fact that all we really ever learned about was Thomas Edison isn't right. Thomas Edison came up with half the invention. And he didn't even really come up with it. He partially stole it from Nikola Tesla and did it worse. But we also don't learn about Nikola Tesla because history is written by the winners and not by those who tried. But I do hope this video has brought new light and new knowledge to you. And thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested in more videos like this one, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I drop a new video. Um, I plan on dropping at least two videos a month. I work full time currently and I'm also in college, so I don't have a whole lot of time to do editing and also write scripts for videos and record. So I will definitely do my best to put out a video at least once a month. I am very passionate about this. I do want to continue doing this. So if you would like to give me some more time to myself to actually write these videos and not have to go to work, which I would love to do, but you don't have to do anything for me, definitely subscribe to my Patreon and help fund me. That way I can do more research and I can make this my job so that I can keep educating the masses and educating you, my viewers. So, thank you, and I hope to see you next time.